Welcome to Leading Edge. I'm Tim Miller. You know, it's a brand new year, and that usually means a lot of change in local politics. And that is the case with the Lucas County Commissioners. And joining us here on Leading Edge is Lisa Sebecki, the newly elected member of the Board of Commissioners. Lisa, thank you so much for joining us. We go back kind of a long way. Uh, I covered you a lot when you were with the Toledo School Board. You were with the House of Representatives, and now you've been elected to the Lucas County Commissioners. My first question is, how do you keep winning elections so easily? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I would have to say it's that they're not easy to win elections. Uh, it takes a lot of work, and I think that, um, and I thank the voters for entrusting me, and they've always been really generous when it comes to the ballot box. So I think that's probably a little... Um, a little bit of saying that we support her. So <laughs> Right. Now you join on the board of commissioners, longtime commissioners, Pete Gherkin and Tina Skeldon Wozniak. Um, I'm sure you've known them over the years in, in your time with your other positions. Uh, how is that going so far? And, uh, you know, are they welcome you, you, you into the fold so far? I know it's only been a couple of weeks since you actually uh, took the, uh, the office there. No, great question, Tim. Um, no, they it's it's been just really, um, really, really nice um, coming into this position. Um, soon after the election, both commissioners had reached out to me. Their staff has been very open and in helping me get settled into this new role. And it's just been um, a really, really uh, humbling um, process going through. Do you think back to, okay, I was on, on the school board too long ago, then I was uh, working for the people of your district down in Columbus, making those long drives back and forth. Do you feel back home in a way now that you're working in Lucas County every day? Uh, I do feel a little bit back home, but I want to, the viewers and yourself know, Tim, though, just because I'm not at the state house anymore doesn't mean that I won't be traveling up and down that road to Columbus um, on behalf of Lucas County, just a kind of a little bit of a different role um, and take on that. But it does, you know, it is nice to be home. I, I um, look, get to look at the weather reports right here in Toledo and not have to look at the weather reports all the way from Toledo to Columbus <laughs> to know what I'm going to be facing for a two and a half hour drive. So that right. is a little bit relieving. Um, but um, it's also nice to spend a little bit more time with the family. I have two, two grandchildren and Get to see them a little bit more often. I'm sure that is a big bonus here. Uh, now, you had run during your campaign on one of the issues you wanted was a strategic plan. You wanted to create a strategic plan. I'm kind of surprised there hasn't been one in Lucas County before. Is that something that you were surprised about? And and how will you go about doing this? Well, I, I, was, I, I was kind of a little bit surprised. But uh, I'll tell you what, Tim, though, it took, you know, if you remember back when I served on school board, we did the performance audit and we did a strategic plan. And so I, I, I've sat back and watched that strategic plan come into place and how the school district has been, had been working through that and have really guided them um, on direction. And I, you know, I started looking in on county commissioner. I was like, I, I was kind of shocked. Why, why do we, do, why don't they have this? Right. Um, but it's not to say that I'm sure that, you know, all the county commissioners have some type of plan of things, but just really just solidifying this. And so we're going to take our time. We're going to look into this, do it right. And I always say to everyone, it's kind of that internal strategic plan, but the external strategic plan as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, I, I'm hoping that in the next, you know, couple months, we'll be having an announcement and, and you now get to talk more about that. Right. Now, one of the biggest issues, maybe the biggest issue, some would say, for Lucas County is a new jail. This is something that is really needed. How does that fit into your strategic plan? And how will the plans move forward with Lisa Sebecki on the board of Lucas County Commissioners? Because a lot of people think this is kind of stuck in the mud right now. Sure, sure. Well, uh, I would say, folks, it's, it's not stuck in the mud. We're going to get this jail built. Um, and I know it's been talked about for a long time and, and the viewers are actually pretty you know accurate in their feelings it's been about 10 years but i um i've said we're going to get this thing done this year even if i have to go out there and and make the bricks myself and start laying the bricks it might look like a leaning tower of pisa by the time i would be done with it but uh, we desperately need to have this jail um and the longer that we wait the price tag continues to go up 
And so as being, a, you know, what it be a good stewards of taxpayer dollars, we need to do it right, but we need to do it now. Has the location and, been chosen? Uh, you know, there's, you know, Tim, there's, you know, a couple of great places, you know, we've talked about the, the county commission talked about the health department. Mm -hmm. They've talked about a location of where they've had their, some of their facilities right down here. But at the end of the day, the location is going to be downtown. It's going to be right where the voters had said they wanted it to be in right downtown I'm in Toledo. So, you know, that jail is going to get done. I think that we're going to have some, you know, announcements in the, in the near future, just really exactly where and when that all will start. Um, but I'm committed to getting that job done. Lisa Zubecki joining us here on Leading Edge, a new Lucas County Commissioner. Lisa, what else do you hope to do? We know it maybe takes a little time to get uh, situated in a new uh, position and a new role. What else would you like to do uh, during your term here? I want to complete some of the projects that the counties are, as they talked about it and started. Uh, Lucas County Care and Control, we call this LC4. I'm mm -hmm. um, getting that also has been talked about for about 10 years. So getting that uh, from its current location to the uh, new location that will be right where Ohio Means Jobs used to be, um, or people would know as the early vote center, the old early vote center, mm -hmm. um, putting it there. So I'm really excited for that to get. I think in the, in the coming weeks, you're going to hear some more around that. Um, so it's really kind of those promises made, promises kept type of thing that Commissioner Gherkin, as he came in as president, had talked about. So committed to that. But what I'd ask the voters to do is to keep us and hold us accountable. And I think that they're going to see some really good things in the next years come out. Um, and as for me, for Lucas County Commissioner, I am just being out in the community and continue to talk and work with um, our community. And I know uh, you will be working hard as you always have. Lisa, thank you so much for joining us. We'll let you have some time to kind of get situated in the job there. But it's good to have you back home. And I'm glad you're going to have that extra time with your family and your grandkids, especially. Thank you, Tim. I really appreciate the opportunity. All right. Lisa Sebecki, the newest Lucas County Commissioner. Thanks for joining us. When we come back on Leading Edge, something we didn't get a chance to talk with Lisa about, the brand new Glass City Center. It's a convention center that you need to see. Stay with us. Well, welcome back to Leading Edge. One of the newest jewels of downtown Toledo is the new convention center. It's no longer the Seagate Convention Center. It is the Glass City Center. Joining us now is the general manager of the Glass City Center, Steve Miller. Steve, thanks so much for being here. I know you guys just had your grand opening to the public a few weeks ago. How are things going so far? How fun it is, is it to show off this new center? You know, it's, it's, been, it's been awesome. I, I came to town 15 years ago to open the Huntington Center and you know, the Seagate Center, I think, was a little bit of a tired building back then, mm -hmm. and we've been working very feverishly with the Lucas County Commissioners, and they've really stepped up and made this thing work, and, you know, it's, it's, it's really a total retrofit of the entire facility, and we're so excited about it. Yeah, I had a chance back in June of last summer for the YMCA Gymnastic Nationals. My daughter was competing. It was her senior year. It was a big event, and the center was almost done, and it was kind of like this was a really cool place for folks from out of town and out of state to come to. And they had a great experience. And I can only imagine now that it is completed, uh, what are some of the reviews you're getting from people? Well, it's, it's been really, really well received. We had, we had the Ohio Library Council was our first convention, hadn't even been to town since 2015. And all the librarians in the state of Ohio came up here for their conference. And I gotta be honest, we probably weren't kind of a little bit further along than the YMCA gymnastics, but probably weren't totally done. They had a great experience and hopefully we're gonna get those, those folks on our rotation. But, you know, not only is is the local event business getting better, but it's also the regional and potentially even some of the national events are looking at Toledo. It's it's a, it's such a great location. You know, at the crossroads of seventy five and the Turnpike, and you can go east and west. And I think they tell us that you know half the population lives within an eight hour drive of Toledo, which to me is pretty amazing. And uh, you can you can really see the excitement of what's going to happen and for things to come. Yeah, and, and there's so much more room now available. It's much more modern. That ballroom, though, upstairs, talk about that. Uh, this is a place where people are going to have an experience and they have amazing views of downtown, uh, even of Fifth Third Field, the ballpark. Yeah, you know, when, when the Lucas County Commissioners did the study, you know, six, six or seven years ago, they had, a, they had an independent feasibility study group come in from St. Louis and did a study that, that the first thing that came back was you need a ballroom. If you're going to compete for association business in the state of Ohio 
and regional business and different types of businesses, you need to have a ballroom that you can do banquets and food service events and those type of things. So the ballroom is the new space that was done first. And then once the ballroom was completed, we went in and did a complete renovation of the convention center. But the ballroom, you know, 16,000 square feet, it can do a, it can do a banquet for 900 people at one time. Wow. And it really puts us on the map now. We've had a lot of great, cool fundraisers that have come into the ballroom space uh, locally, but we've also had it be utilized with some of our association businesses that we're doing as well. It's just, it's, it's 25 foot ceilings. It's great acoustics. There's great technology. It's fully carpeted. It's an elegant space. As you said about the ballpark, it's got an awesome view of fifth third field from a balcony in our pre-function space. People could come in and have maybe have a cocktail reception before they go in and do their business, or they can have a registration area out there. It's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful space. Sometimes you, you don't think that you're in Toledo. You know, it's, it's, it's such a great view of, of the whole downtown atmosphere. Yeah, it really is. And you have the trifecta now, right? And you have been mentioned this. Uh, you have the, the Huntington Center, which was built, Fifth Third Field. Of course, the Mud Hens have been playing there for a while, but you had this convention center that maybe just didn't quite have that modern feel. Now you do. So uh, you can really sell it here, right? Is, is it, it might not even be that hard to get bookings because people are probably talking about it, right? Yeah, I think they're interested in, in Toledo. You know, the, and the convention center was designed to be that anchor. You know, when people would come in and have the, the convention business or the, you know, the corporate meetings and they do their business during the day, and they look for something to do in the evening. And, you know, with Fifth Third Field and Huntington Center right across the street from each other, in the wintertime, you can go to a walleye game or a concert. In the summertime, you can go to a Mud Hens game. Imagination Station, you know, two blocks down the road. The zoo's, you know, a mile and a half away from the facility. You, the art museum's right down the street. We just we set, have such a cool package now that, that Toledo probably didn't have for quite some time that we're really selling not only the convention center as that anchor, but selling all the other stuff that there is to do. And, and, and it's being very well received. I think people are really excited about coming to Toledo. There's, there's been a lot of comments about, man, I've been in Toledo in, you know, seven, eight, 10 years. And wow, what you guys have done to downtown Toledo is amazing. Right. And even when you look at it from the outside, you have the, the art sculpture outside. It just has that feeling and, and the buildings behind it. It has the feeling of a new city almost, doesn't it? It does. You know, the, the, the commissioners worked with the Arts Commission and put $1.5 million of public art in the facility and and the we call it the Blue Lupine is the is the sculpture that's out in the park. And, you know, we want to make this, you know, a beautiful space. We partnered with the Art Museum. We've got permission to use some of their awesome artwork that's been in the uh, Art Museum. And they gave us a licensing so that we have artwork hanging around the building that people can enjoy. It's just it's just a cool place to, to hang out and do your business and uh, you know the technology is so good now. We, we didn't we didn't have very much even Cat Five wiring back then. The entire facility is now has a fiber backbone. We can do video game conventions now that take up all that data. They can come in and plug in and have those type of events. We just have we have everything now that we need to take the convention center to that next level. Because really, you're competing with how many other cities uh, in the Midwest and around the country. And if if you don't have that technology, if you don't have places where they can you know do their PowerPoint presentations or have some interactive experience you will lose out on that big gig. So now you have the tools you need to get those bookings. That's right. I mean, it's, 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 it's the whole package now. And now we have a beautiful brand new hotel, the Hilton's next door that's attached to us and went under, underwent a huge renovation as well. So that's what you need to, to gather convention business and meetings is you need to have a, a hotel attached to the center. And you need to have a center that's capable of handling all of the needs of all of the clients that are coming into the facility. And technology is one of the big ones at the top of the list. And you also mentioned that you did do renovations to the actual showrooms downstairs. This is where you go to the car show or the auto show, and that's the rooms you'll be in. Even some political rallies have been held there, some presidential rallies. That was important too, wasn't it, Steve? It really was because we didn't want to have a brand new ballroom that looked awesome and then have a tired convention center and kind of flip flop back and forth. So again, commissioners recognized that right away and wanted to make sure that we invested properly into the existing convention center to make sure that it's a brand new space. I mean, instead of having the, the, the 90s, I say, the, the 90s version of the tans and the, you know, the beiges, we have, you know, grays and whites and very bright lights now, all LED lighting, very bright inside. It just, it makes the facility look bigger, but it just makes it look brand new. And the, all the glass too. I mean, we are the glass city, obviously, right? So I'm sure that went into this design. And it gives you those views, but it also looks nice from the outside too. It, it has a sleek look. It does. You know, all of the glass was replaced in the exterior of the facility, so uh, it's all brand new space. We had some probably some glass that was you know a little bit uh, beat up and, and needed to be replaced. And now that it's all brand new, we actually put a brand new boardroom. We redesigned our entire third floor. We have this awesome ball boardroom that can seat 26 people. 
has full video conferencing suite inside and it has a big window that overlooks St. Clair Street right through downtown Toledo. It's really cool. I need to be invited to something. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I want to get in there and check it out. Well, Steve Miller, thank you so much for talking to us about the new Glass City Center. We hope you're so busy that it's, you have to turn people away because you want to get as many uh, groups in there as possible and show it off. Absolutely. I, we're going to have a lot of cool things coming. A lot, of, a lot of people are going to be coming to downtown Toledo very soon. Can't wait to see it and wait for the weather to turn so things get a little warmer, too. So thank you, Steve, so much. We appreciate it. Thanks for joining us here on Leading Edge. And when we come back, we check in with an old friend who's now a chief of the fire department in Lake Township. Welcome back to Leading Edge. Once again, I'm Tim Miller. I've been told by a lot of friends and colleagues over the years that firefighting is a job that so many people love that you kind of eat and breathe it. And that's exactly what is the case for our next guest, the new Lake Township Fire Chief, Barrett Dorner. Barrett, thanks so much for joining us. You and I go way back. <laughs> and you actually started not in firefighting, but at WTOL 11. And here you are as a fire chief. How did things change so quickly for you? Well, I'm definitely not going to pander or anything like that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, I got that mug the right way too. I didn't just steal that from the break room. Thank um, you. you know, it, it, <laughs> it's odd. It's kind of cool coming full circle, um, being the first producer of Leading Edge back in the day with Jerry. And, uh, and and I think, you know, growing up, I grew up in a, in a public safety family. So we watched the news all the time. So my parents, my mom, dad, stepmom, stepdad, all Toledo police officers, um, so we'd watch to see what was going on in their district. And so news was always part of my childhood, but so was the public safety side. So there was always this like interaction. And at first, you know, the storytelling, the, the shooting video, sharing the stories of the first responders, you know, that was, that was my niche. Those were the stories I like to cover. Spot news, going to um, car accidents, fires, things like that. Right. And so after a while, I knew that volunteer firefighting was kind of something I wanted to try. And as soon as my brother and I started doing that, we started at Rossford in 2009. As soon as we started doing that, we both looked at each other, I think after our first call and said, yeah, this is what we need to be doing. And so yeah, I have a good odd path to get here, but. <laughs> right, exactly. I have a good friend back in Erie, Pennsylvania. He was a news photographer that I worked with for years, but he always wanted to be a firefighter. And, and he was a, an Erie firefighter. He was the chief fire inspector. And so there is a connection, I think, between the media and the fire department, because we have a uh, a respect for what they do, and, it, and it's a difficult job. You've worked your way up. I mean, you are a Toledo firefighter, uh, Portage fire chief. As you mentioned, you work for Rossford Fire Department, now mm -hmm. Lake Township. Is this just kind of pro a progression? How are things going so far in Lake? Um, yeah, definitely a progression uh, in terms of um, just kind of feeling things out. I, I joked that, you know, taking the, the job in, in Oak Harbor as the Portage Fire District Chief was kind of like being the dog who wanted to catch the car, but I wasn't sure if I would know what I'd do with it when I caught it. <laughs> right. I wanted to make sure that that was the direction I wanted to go because I felt so lucky to be part of Toledo Fire, you know, working every third day, going to a lot of calls, seeing so much across the city of Toledo. Um, but I knew in my heart that, that administration mixed with the operation stuff, going on calls, but also sitting here working on my budget. That was, that was kind of where I wanted to be. And, and Lake presented the opportunity to not only come home to, to Wood County for me, I'm from Perrysburg, Northern Wood County, watching the fire service grow here has been uh, such a cool thing to see. And now to be a part of it, uh, it's just serendipitous to be back here. But yeah, it's, it's all been kind of an interesting path to, to figure out where I fit in the fire service. And, um, and that's kind of what Portage was. And, and it was great to be part of the Oak Harbor community. I'm going to miss them so much. We got so much done as a team over the last year and a half. And now it's on the lake where we're facing a lot of the same challenges, the volunteer fire service. Um, and we use the term volunteer kind of loosely now. There are some places that still don't pay their people. Our yeah. folks are paid when they come in on a call, um, but they're still volunteering their time. They're still coming in when the pager goes off and, and dropping everything at home. Um, and there's, you know, there's an inherent delay in getting to the station. And now there's more training requirements and there's more um, you know, people are working longer hours at work because employers are having trouble as their full-time employers finding people. Right. Um, so there's these layers of struggles that existed even before COVID, but, but post-COVID, especially with costs increasing. Um, again, the, the workforce um, diminishing for a lot of the, the industries that our folks are in, a lot of construction workers, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of those blue collar jobs where they're having trouble finding people. So our folks are working 16 hour days they're not as available to show up on a run. So it's, that's kind of the priority at Lake is looking to see 
you know, what does the next step look like? What, what do we need to do to make sure someone can get to your house when you call 911? And it's not a lake problem. It's the problem across the board. Uh, it's just, it's a very different fire service than it was, um, you know, a decade ago, two decades ago. It, it's just completely different. And it's not like a business has to maybe close up early because they can't get enough employees with what you do. It's a matter of life and death. So yeah. you have to kind of work around that. I know a lot of times, Barrett, I think about uh, Lake Township and you think what happened in 2010 with the tornado that just devastated the community. Is that something, and I know there's a memorial right there at the township mm -hmm. building. Is that something that you thought of was, I remember what happened in Lake Township in 2010 and, and how it did uh, damage so many lives. Do, do you carry that with you? Is that part of protecting the people, would you say? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I actually came out here that night as a reporter. I was out here as a reporter with my photographer from Fox 36. Um, I was on the air with our weather caster at the time because I had I had studied meteorology at BGSU um, as my minor at the time. That's what I was in the middle of studying. And so our weather caster um, kind of handled all the, you know, here's what you need to do. I was running the radar telling people if there's wow. a tornado, it's coming right down 795. So many of the things we did at Portage in terms of um, alarm levels, making sure we can get the resources in, in today's day and age where we're all struggling, came back in my mind to do the worst case scenario, which was mm. Lake Township. And we know that you're up to the challenge there. Uh, Fire Chief in Lake Township, Barrett Dorner, we do thank you so much for joining us. Good luck and, and uh, take some time to get settled in there. Appreciate your time. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. All right, Barry, thanks so much. We'll be back here on Leading Edge. Well, welcome back to Leading Edge. I want to thank all of our guests for being a part of this show and for you for watching as well. Have a great rest of your weekend. I'm Tim Miller.